Hi friends, it's Marie at Living Felt and today we have a fun tutorial for you needle felting our sweet and simple forest friends. Today we are going to needle felt a bat, an owl, and a little red panda. This project is so fun and simple. It's a great starter place for someone who's looking to begin needle felting. It's great if you want to teach someone and man, they just make such sweet little gifts and decor. These projects were inspired by our sweet and simple fox, which is a kit and a much loved project over the years. The concept design for these little creatures came from our resident fairy, Katie. She noticed how much people love the sweet and simple fox, and so she came up with some ideas to build on that. In this tutorial, we will build on skills. First, we will learn how to make a firm under shape. We'll use that same shape for all of our critters. We'll share different techniques so you can use the same supplies to make a little bat with wings, a little owl with wings, or a red panda with a tail. We've created one kit that will make all three critters, or you can create multiples of one of them. Let's take a quick look at the supplies for today's tutorials and what is in the kit as well. Of course, you'll need a felting service. This I'll be working on our wow mat and I'll also be using a wow wee topper. You'll need felting needles. Mine are pretty much just fine and this little wooden skewer, which does come in the kit. A couple of pins might help and some fabric scissors. We're going to be working with wool batting here and these are the colors that come in the kit. We're also going to be using 100% wool felt and some core wool. Today we'll be demonstrating each of the three critters that you can make with the kit and truly you could make each of the critters from the kit. So you could make three or you could make multiples of one. You'll just want to divide your supplies in advance. And if you make multiple wings, uh, more than two pairs, then you might need to get some more wool felt. In the kit, you have diagrams that show you two different size of critters you can create. We're going to be making the larger size. So refer to that diagram and then divide your core wool so that you can make all the critters you want. In this case, you can make three of the larger critters with the fiber we're giving you. So divide it into thirds and separate it so you have it ready to go. We're going to demonstrate for all of the critters how to needle felt the base shape of the body. And again, this is going to be the larger size working with approximately a quarter to three tenths of an ounce of core wool. Get your skewer, get your uh, felting needles and your fiber. We're going to separate the fiber into thin lengths and we're going to wrap it around our skewer very tightly. We're going to wrap the wool around our skewer just around this portion and we're going to let it go a little over the top. Wrap your wool very tightly so that there's no air in it and wrap until you run out of a strip of fiber. So first start by holding it down with your thumb Keep your hands close together and pull very, very tightly and just twist. Hold tension the entire time. When you get to the end, use your fingers to make it nice and tight. And then if it's still a little loose, tack it down with your felting needle at a very shallow angle. With each new wrap, as soon as you start, just hold the tension, tack it down to the fibers underneath, and then try to form a little shelf. Don't let this squiggle out. Just use your fingers to create a base, wrap around the base a few times, and then work your way up. All the way up and down to create this oval sort of shape that will be bigger along the base, and we'll just keep repeating this very same process. Needle felt right into the base after each wrap to make it flat. We use the skewer in the center because it gives us a center spine or a center to needle felt towards. Each time you poke your needle, don't go past the center. This is gonna help us create a very firm shape. Each time you wrap new fiber, wrap it tightly and tack it down. 
Working with your wool in little thin strips will help you control how it goes on to the skewer and the shape and keep it from being overly lumpy and bumpy. You want to keep your needle at a very shallow angle so that you don't hit the skewer. If you bend or bow the tip of the needle, if it gets a bend in it, it will probably break over time and we want to avoid that. So just avoid hitting the skewer by going at a shallow angle. When you want to needle felt the top and round it out, you can push it off the skewer just a tiny bit to give yourself a little room and needle felt right into that tip. You'll notice that we needle felt the base to a flat shape each time we add a new piece on by going straight up the bottom. Needle felting our under shape firmly is going to really help us get a nice smooth finish on the outside of our piece. You'll notice that we needle felt at an angle and not just straight in towards the skewer and this actually adds strength by condensing the piece from the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom. Once you have a little bit of fiber on your shape and there's more distance between the fiber and the skewer, you might like to try using a group of felting needles together and I like to rubber band three 42 triangles together as a great compression tool. If you want your piece to be bigger, instead of leaving air and loft in it, needle felt it firmly and add more fiber where you want it to increase in size. Once you're happy with your shape, you can push it off the skewer and then take some time to do some final shaping and firming up with your felting needles and get it to the shape you want. You can also use this time to make multiple underbodies for covering later. Needle felt your pieces until they're nice and firm. You should be able to give them a good squish without them misshaping. So this one right here needs a little more work. See how I can squish it and there's a lot of air in it. So keep needle felting your pieces until they feel a little more like this. And you can also check out our short on firmness. The first critter we're going to create is our bat. So grab your black and brown fiber, your wool felt, and cut out the wing and the ear shapes out of paper. That could be a good help. To create our bat, we're going to be using black, a blend of black and brown, and brown. So let's make a little blend of the brown. We really don't need much, so you can separate the bat by peeling off a thin layer. And whenever I make a blend, I like to start with a little 50-50 blend. You can stack the two colors together, put your hands together, pull, stack, pull and stack, pull and stack. It's very easy. And blend it as much as you want so that you like the color mix. And you might use this on another critter, so make about this much. Covering our base shapes is going to follow the same principle no matter the arrangement of fibers that you use for any critter that you're making. So follow the same methodology for the next two critters in the demonstration. You can cover the bottom first, that's kind of helpful. You want enough fibers that you can't see through to the under layer. To achieve that, just take a little unruly pinch like this and stack it back on itself until it's a little more solid. So cover the bottom and then tack that down with your fine felting needle. We're going to cover this part with black right here on the bottom. So take a strip of your batting and make sure that it will go all the way around with a slight overlap just about like that, and then just pull off any excess. Wherever you start with a wrap, needle felt down one end first, and then work your way around.
This middle portion is going to be our blend and overlapping in colors is always your friend as opposed to having really hard lines because you don't want the underneath side to show through. This isn't a long strip like our other fiber was, but it's no problem. You just take a little cluster and then just stretch it out and form it to be a little more of a strip or you could do it in patches like this. So we want this just to be a nice blend and these loose edges are really your friend for the blend. The very top of this little guy is just going to be our brown. So we just need to stack it to cover it well. You can start with a strip first if you like, but I just want mine to lay right on the top like a crown. We have all these loose edges. We want them to blend down into this fiber down below. So when we needle felt, we're going to needle felt down in this direction to taper them down. If you needle felt this way, you're going to create a ridge. Any blend you don't like, we can go over and cover with another little pinch of batting. So don't worry about that. We want to needle felt all of this wool so it's laying down nicely and I really just want the head of my bat to be this light brown. So now that we have all of this layered in, we can just go in and patch over any of that join area with a little more blend. So get your final outer looking just how you want it. The base shape of my bat is ready and now I'd like to add the wings. We're going to cut your wings out of the felt, so cut out your paper template and then cut yours out of the black felt. I like to add the wings to my bat before I add the face or the ears because it really starts to bring them to life. And a fun thing about this project is you can work with the black felt just like this and you don't have to cover it with any additional fiber. So decide which is going to be the face or the front of your bat and take your black wings. We're going to use a couple of little straight pins Yours might be shorter than mine. Just be careful not to poke yourself. And let's pin them into place so you can get them right where you want them. Once you're happy with your approximate wing placement and they're pinned into place, then we can just needle felt them right onto the body of the bat. Using your black fiber going one wing at a time, just put the black right over the edge where the wing joins the body and needle felt it into place. Remove your pin first so that you don't hit the pin. And you'll needle felt all the way through the felt. On the front side so that the wings have a little more um, support and strength and don't just flop, you can tuck a little bit of fiber right there and needle felt as well and it's just going to hold them open.
So we're going to make our uh, large bat ears approximately the size of this. You can cut it out of the felt if you want, or you can just use this as a guide. I like to make mine out of the blend. If you have a wowie topper or even uh, a sheet of felt or fabric, this will help uh, you not get the fiber too embedded into your foam mat or your wow mat, whichever you're using. And what we can do, just pull off a little tuft. This is just you know the size of a nickel or so with all the furry edges out there. And we're going to needle felt just in the very center first and get that flat. So about the size of my finger-ish, my adult index finger. Make them both at the same time. And if you have trailing fibers, let that go to the bottom. That's where we'll attach it to the head. Needle felt the center, peel it off, flip it over, and repeat. We're just compacting what will be the inner part of the ear. And then we're gonna fold it into like a triangle. You can use anything. I just use my felting needle. Fold it over the felting needle to get that shape. Lightly tack it, and then do the same on this side. Just coax all that into the middle and then lightly tack it down. I'm not trying to attach it to this shape like deeply, just using the mat to kind of hold it in place. So you're gonna to wanna to peel it off before you go too far and needle felt a little bit from this side as well. Shallow, shallow, shallow pokes because we just want the wool to bind to itself rather than bind to the mat underneath. Once you have the basic shape in place, we really want to add some density to the ears and you're going to do that with these shallow pokes front and back, but also along the edges and that can feel like you're going to poke your finger so it can help to give the ear a little bit of shape by curling it and then just doing your shallow pokes. If your ears feel too thin, uh, well then add more fiber to them. If they feel so thin that you can't build up density, just add a little more fiber on top and keep needle felting them. And you'll needle felt along each edge from both front and back to kind of build the density and the shape. An option is to add a little color inside the ear uh, if you want. I don't think I'm gonna do it on the adult, but we'll do it on the baby, like example for the baby ear. So just take a little tuft of your pink or whatever you have, and it doesn't need to go too far because all of this is gonna attach onto the head. So just drop a little color right in there and you're gonna to want to do very shallow pokes so that it doesn't go through to the backside. It's okay if the inner ear is a little fuzzy. Just like that to add a little color. Now if, it, if you feel like it's gone back through the other side, well then just tame that down. You'll be surprised or you can also plop a little bit of color on there but you can poke it right back in and it's not so obvious and rough up the back as well with your felting needle. So that might be for the baby ear and this might be for an adult ear. When you make these small parts, if you find that they're still just, they seem too hairy or too fuzzy for your taste, first just make sure they're needle felted firmly. And after you know that's done, you could go around with something like your uh, fiber shears and just give them a little snip. So just trim the surface so that they look nice and clean. And you can do that on anything you've needle felted. Just make sure you felted it firmly in the first place. We have our little bat ears ready and they can look, they look quite large, but don't worry about that because you can position them on your bat wherever you want. And you can also use your pins again if you want to sort of choose that placement. So all of the fiber can go to the back of the head or you can also split it open just a tiny bit so that some of it is gonna sit right on the top of the head. Don't worry about the color joins because again, we can cover anything we don't want uh, we don't love with another color so that we like how it's blended. I'm going to pin this ear from the back so I can get a better visual and let's choose the placement before we tack it down. I think it kind of seems like about the right 
kind of about the right placement. Now the ears, when we join the ears, what we want to do is gather them together at the base so that they're not big and open like this. We want them to be joined together just a little bit when we tack them down. So I'm going to have mine coming just off the side of the head and then you can start with a tack right here in the middle and then gather your edges and coax those in. And then whatever is excess back here, if you just have way too much like I do, you can just pull it off. Anchor it down with your finger or your thumb so that you have a really good grip on that and then tear off the excess. And then the rest of this you can blend into the back of the head and the body. And repeat on the second side. I love the shape of the ears here, but what I want to see how this is like a very obvious line here of the dark color. You can choose to just cover it, you know, with the same lighter color, or you could blend some of the darker color in there as well. Both work. Just take a small patch, don't need to shape it too much, and just place it right where that line is that you don't love. With our ears in place, we want to needle felt over the whole of your bat so that everything is nice and laying down and smooth. And you want to be able to run your fingers across the bat and the fibers not get messed up. That's how you know that it's tacked down nicely. And it's the other reason for that firm undershape. So all we really need to add to our little bat is a nose and eyes. For the nose, we're going to use this cute little pink because this is a sweet a little bat. We're going to use a cute little uh, pink for the nose and just little black dots for the eyes. And we're going to make it like a little heart shape. And I start with just a blob and mine's going to go right about here where the brown and the black come together. That's where the top is. Needle felt just a little in the center to get it laying down. We'll just start to shape it into a heart and coax these fibers around. Now you could also just make it a little triangle or little shape, whatever you want. The, the heart was just part of the original design, which I think is very endearing. Our eyes are the final piece for this little guy and we are just going to be using fiber. You could use beads or buttons or anything that you want but we're just gonna give them two little cute black dot eyes. So pull off a couple of tiny tufts of fiber. You don't really need to do too much, but kind of just get them in the, the place where you think you want the eyes to be. And I want them to just come diagonal off the ends of the hearts here. And we're just going to poke straight in and twirl. Poke straight in and twirl and poke. This little bat is done and he's ready to sit or hang around anywhere you'd like to put him. And here's an example of two little bats 
two different sizes, both very similar, both super cute, except this one has little pink in his ears. To needle felt our owl, we are going to cover the base body shape in the 50-50 blend of black and brown. So follow the same methodology that we demonstrated there, covering the bottom and then covering the outside with the fiber. To create the ear for your owls, follow the same shape as we did in the bat demonstration, just don't attach them yet. For our owl wings, use the paper patterns and cut out two pieces from the wool felt. What's different about the owl is we're going to cover the wings with dyed wool and I'm going to use the very same batting that we colored, covered the body with. So it's gonna be the exact same colorway. Just get yourself a very thin bat together, lay it on your wings. It should be very thin then we're going to start by tacking it down into the main part of the wing, and we're just going to wrap it around until it's 100% covered. You can leave yourself a little bit off the end right here where we'll attach it to the body. When you wrap it around, just pull it snugly and needle felt. So make sure you make two wings and cover them 100% in your dyed batting. Your choosing placement for your owl wings, you know, they could be down and kind of demure. They could be going back on the body, you know, towards the, towards the back like this. And it's kind of hard to tell, you know, because they're all the same color, but that also gives you lots of options. And then uh, they can also be a little more here on the sides and sticking out. So choose your wing placement. Again, use your pins, and then we're just going to needle felt them into place just like we did on the bat wings. If you want the wings to sit a little more forward, you might try folding this felt part onto the front we're going to needle felt this down and then we're going to shore it up on the back by putting wool underneath here. So check this out. This is the face of our owl. We're going to bend the felt so it's sitting ever so slightly towards the front instead of the back. And now we can put some fiber behind here and that'll push the wing forward just a little bit. Attach your second wing in the same way. For the owl ears, what we're going to do is take each one and separate the fluff just a little bit so you have like a little pad here. And then that pad we're going to position on the head and bring the ears just a little forward towards the face like this. Needle felt right in the middle just like we did with the bat. Get them sort of tacked into place and then you can play with the position. So let's do the second one. Again, a little forward. Needle felt right in the middle. And then you can sort of play with how you want them pointing a little to the side, perhaps, or a little up, but they're, we're gonna kind of put them on that angle of the head there.
To create the face and the tummy for our owl, we're going to do blends of the white and this brown. And just for interest, why don't we blend it to be a little bit lighter for the face and a 50-50 for the tummy area. So start with a 50-50 ratio of the two colors and blend just like we did the brown and the black. And this will be way more than you need, by the way, so blend as much as you like. It doesn't have to be completely homogenous, that's up to you. Sometimes the more modeled it is, the more fun and character it has. So blend them up until you're happy. And I can see right now I've already blended this 50-50 blend I actually think will work um, better for the face. That's quite kind of light. And then I have this one that is a little bit darker and I'll use that for the tummy. So if you blend your 50-50 and it looks like mine, it's really light, well then add a little more brown to get this color or if you ended up with this color, add a little more white to get to that color. Both will work and there's no hard rules here. These are just some guides for you to play with. Let's take our tummy fiber and set it aside. We're going to start with the face in this case. And you have a diagram that shows the basic outline of the face. There's no rules. You could put down two big circles for the eye sockets. You could do anything you want. We've cut out a little shape that kind of emulates what is in the diagram. So if you want to go with a more defined shape like this, you might find it easier to start with a, a cutout of the shape as a guide. Now you don't have to work 100% on this little shape to get started. Let's firm up this piece and get it a little bit felted right here on our mat. So make a thin little bat that's bigger than your shape and put your shape right on top of it. And then we're just going to needle felt around the perimeter to start. Once you have that perimeter, I know it's difficult to see, but once you have the perimeter outlined, tack down that middle area so that it gets a little more flat. Again, we're not trying to bind it to the base underneath. We're just using that base to attach it to, and basically give us a surface. Lift it up before you go too far. And all we've done really is use this to give us some compression. So bring our shape back in. And now then we're going to guide these fibers around to sort of match the shape of our little guide. If you have too much anywhere, we just wanna fold back to the middle, then just tear some off. Cause we're not looking for a lot of bulk. We're just looking for a basic shape. And I will start by guiding this in and guiding all of these fibers in towards that shape. That is our basic little shape. Lift it up and then we'll just put that right onto our owl. You don't want it 100% needle felted when you put it on the owl. It should have a lot of room left to go. So I'm gonna position it right here and start right in that middle. Let's tack down the inners and then we'll guide the outsides to a really um, nice transition between the eye face area and the rest of the body. To make the beak for our owl, we are going to use just the very tippy tip of our skewer. If you have something thinner, you can use it, or if you feel very adept, you can also use just the end of your needle. That's up to you. We really don't need that much fiber to make a beak for such a tiny little guy. So take a tiny strip of fiber, get it right onto the end of your skewer, 
and twist. Make it very compact. Twist, twist, twist. For our beak, it's just this tiny little thing and we want to try and get it as clean as possible. So we're just needle felting right into the center uh, working to firm it up and it should be a little bit longer than you need because of how we're going to attach it. You could attach your beak so that it's kind of sticking off of your bird but something we've done before uh, that that works really well is using this extra tail as like a base attachment. What we'll do is we'll use this tail and we're going to anchor the beak right into the center of the face, right where there's that little dip. And then we can wrap the beak around and it could even lay flat on the face like this and be arched down. And this way it's going to have a very firm attachment like that. You can also make it flat against the face if you want and have it, you know, down almost all the way. And so we're going to use all of this part under here as a really nice anchor. Then we'll fold this over, try and get you see, fold this over and then needle felt right in the top of this. And that's going to provide a lot of structure and strength to that attachment. And you can leave just the very end unattached. Our eyes are going to be two little dots, just like we did on the bat. For our tummy fiber, the face is has a very sort of defined and clear outline. And for the tummy fiber, we're just gonna let that be a little more suggestive. And we'll do that by taking the little blend that we have, pulling off a small amount. Again, it doesn't need to be very thick. Uh, it doesn't even need to go very far. But what we're going to do is put it on and let the ends be wispy. And we're going to just let those be a little more organic so that some of the under color shows through. Play with the fibers until you sort of like the combination and then just Tap it into place to give it one last look before you're finished and see if you like the placement. We like this little white tuft we've discovered and we're gonna keep it. I just wanna move it a little towards the center. I like that. So now, again, what I want is all of these things to be gently blending in and we'll do that by needle felting outward. This is our little owl. He was so fun to make and I think he would make a darling little Christmas ornament. For our red panda, we're gonna cover the entire base in this color. Right here on the lower tummy, we're going to use our black and brown blend, just a tiny bit. Anywhere there's something you don't like, you can either cover it up or you can tear it off. I had that straight line going across and it was too obvious, so I just tore it away and now it looks a little more organic. For our panda bear ears, I like to start by just cutting out two little round-ish shapes that we're going to needle felt the fiber onto. You could make yours a little more pointed or you could try this uh, rounding method like I'm using here because we're gonna be folding the wool over make both ears at the same time. I'm using the blended black and brown on this also, and if you prefer, you could just use the, the straight brown. Both really work. So we have a little mat of fiber here, and we're going to uh, put our little felt bit right in the middle, and all the fiber will be attached to this ear. I'm gonna fold everything over so that it's fairly snug, 
this felt inside is going to give us a nice little firm foundation for our ear. For this ear, we're going to give it a little bit of brown in the center, just a tiny bit. And then we're going to trim it with a small amount of white. Take a thin, thin strip of your white, very small amount, roll it between your fingers so that it forms a little bit of a density and make it at least twice as long as you need because you're doing this for, for both ears. And we are going to, once we shape the ear, we're going to trim this around the ear just like that. So get the approximate uh, size you need and then you can go ahead and trim it so you have that ready for both ears. To shape this ear, we're going to make them a little more pointy than the underneath felt was. And to achieve that, we're going to needle felt right into the edges. Cup the ear just like we did with our other critters so that we start to shape it and needle felt it into that way. And then we'll just start needle felting the wool right from the tip of the ear here so it gets a slight little point. We're going to take our white piece and center it, sort of fold it in half and center it right at the top and start needle felting in right at the peak. And then we will train it just around the sides. This actually gives even a little more of illusion of it being pointed, just kind of like a little uh, trick of the eye. And it'll make it look just a little more peaked than it actually is. These ears are going to sit right on the head, like right about there. So if you have too much white, you can just trim it off. Repeat the same with the second ear. Now we have our two little ears and to get them on our panda is just like we did with our other critters. You can flare out this wool a little bit and if anything's just too long, tear it off. Patch anywhere you need to to make things look more blended. On the back here, we can add, you know, a little bit of this dark color, or you could patch in the light color. I like a little bit of dark here. To make the face of our panda, we have a little white pattern. You can use cutout shapes like we did before, or you could just use your hands and try and start to guide the fiber as you visualize how you want it to go. Needle felt it once you kind of have it in the shape that you like. I think you could go a lot of directions here. We just honored the diagram and tried to make like two little apostrophes on the side of this little triangular half oval, if you will. So play with that and just make it your own. Have fun while you do it. 
Let's finish our face with eyes, nose, and a mouth, and then we'll give them a tail. So again, we're gonna drop off just a couple of little blobs for our eyes. And I like the eyes for this little guy to just sit right on, almost on top of the muzzle. Poke and twirl, poke and twirl. If you want to give him a little worried or a sad look, you can drop a couple pieces of white fiber just right on top of the eyes and point them in this direction. If they go this direction, he'll look angry, but if they go this direction, uh, he'll look kind of innocent. So tiny, tiny bits, tiny, tiny rolls. Just like we've done with the eyes, we're just going to mask the fibers up and then shape them into a little upside down triangle here. He's actually looking pretty cute and kind of innocent already. So you can give him a little smiley mouth or you can give him even a little straight line uh, just down from the nose. If sometimes given him a little straight line, that can look you know, really cute. It doesn't even have to go very far. So you can play with that before you um, tack it into place. So this is how he would look if, if he just had a straight little line coming down from his nose. Or you can turn that into a little smile. Another little feature you can add are just some highlights in the eyes. The only rule really is they should be on the same side of each eye. So here's the face of this little red panda. I chose to leave the white a little bit sparse on this one because I liked being able to see through it. But here's another one that we've made where the white is a little more filled in and really that just comes with the thickness of the fiber. So choose what works for you. To finish our little red panda, of course he needs a tail. And for that, we are going to be using a chenille stem. Just a couple of inches is all his tail needs to be. I like to fold this over and for the moment we'll leave the rest of this long so that we can use it as a handle. Fold your chenille stem in half. Again, that's just about oh two and a half fingers long. We use our brown fiber and we're going to cover the chenille stem. Put your fiber through the fold and then twist these two together. And then we're just going to wrap tightly, letting it stick off the end of the chenille stem a little bit. So hold your fiber very tight. And wrap. To make your tail, you can cover it in the brown and cover it with black stripes, or you can cover it in black and put brown stripes. The black tends to be at the tip, and you can go solid black, or you could use your blend, and that's going to feel just a little more natural, and we'll use that all the way around. So we want the tail a little more full at the top than at the bottom, and we'll just uh, add some stripes and a little dark tip with our 50-50 mix of brown and black.
little tail is ready to be attached to our baby panda. We are going to scooch as much of this fiber out of the way as possible so we can cut the wire below the point where the fiber goes. That way we can hide the wire and still have it in place. I like to take my pliers and use them to push the fiber down and then cut. So just decide which angle, which direction you want your tail to go. Do you want it to come out this way or that way? And I'm going to have mine come out to the right of the panda and we're just going to seat it right on the base of him right here. And at first just use the extra fiber that you have left on the tail. Attach, you know, the inside and the outside and then go patch any of the areas to get a really solid join. So our little red pandas are all finished. You know, you might find that you deviate a little bit. This one's eyes are a little bit lower. We think it looks, it makes him look a little more baby. He also has a bigger smile and a fuller, you know, fuller colors here. But have fun making your little critters however they come out to be. We hope you've had fun with these little guys. I know I did. As soon as I saw the concept designs, I flipped and went home and started making them and my little baddie was the first. If you would like to do this project with kids, we absolutely think it's a great starting point. Just make sure you make one on your own, evaluate the kids you're working with and maybe foresee any challenges they might have that you could prepare for in advance. Hey, we're here to help. So give us a call if you need anything. We hope you'll check out this kit and explore our other beginning near felting projects on our website. We'll see you next time. Bye y'all.